Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a physics 7c practice problem on the topic of magnetic fields and forces. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. So we have consider a compass sitting exactly halfway, so exactly halfway between two wires which run into and out of the page. Ignore any external magnetic fields. In the following cases, state whether or not the compass will be turned, and if so, which way it would point once it settled down, giving a brief explanation of any field vectors you consider. And then we have basically three scenarios. Um, so as you can see, I have a, my drawing over here. So we do have two wires, and then depending on the scenario, the magnitudes of the currents and the directions of the currents are going to be different. And we basically have to figure out whether the compass is going to move or not. Let's remember that the north of a compass always points in the direction of the magnetic field. So if there is a magnetic field, we just have to point north on the direction of said magnetic field. So let's just go ahead and do, you know, just, just do the first one first, I guess. So for scenario one, uh, the current in wire one goes into the page and the current in wire two goes out of the page. Like this. And then they're both equal to each other. So the first thing that we have to do is, given these directions, what are going to be the directions of my um, magnetic fields? Because these are just the direction of the uh, currents, right? So if we use our right-hand rule, then B1... So the one due to this wire is going to be pointing downwards. And then if you use your right hand rule, but you just consider this guy, then over here, you are also going to get downwards. Due to these currents, both of these guys are going to go downwards and they are also going to have the same magnitude, but they aren't really asking us about magnitude over here because if they both go downwards, then that means that my final answer is going to be a compass that points this is north. So the point, the, the north part is just going to point downwards like this, final answer. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and do the second one. So for the second one, uh, both of them have, oh yeah, and then... Both of them have the same magnitude, but then both of them are going out like this. So B1, in this case, if I use my right hand rule, it's going to go upwards. And then B2, which is this one, if I use my right hand rule, B2 is going to go downwards. Now, what about the magnitudes? Well, the definition is this one over here, right? So just the definition is mu i 2 pi r. This, well, mu is exactly the same because it's just a number. i is exactly the same because they are exactly the same. 2 pi is just a constant and r is the same because this is exactly in the middle. So these two are just going to cancel out. And then your compass doesn't move because your total magnetic field is equal to zero. So final answer is just whatever the compass was doing, it's just going to keep doing what it was doing like this. Final answer. Um, compass doesn't move. So now let's just go ahead and do part C. Well, scenario three, I'm sorry. So for scenario three, you do have out and out. 
out and out. However, uh, the second one is greater. So this is your compass. In terms of directions, your directions are gonna be exactly the same. So this is gonna go up and this is gonna go down. However, is greater, uh, the second current is greater than the first one. So they are not gonna cancel out. Uh, most of it is gonna cancel out, but B2 is stronger because I is greater. So because I is greater, B2 is stronger. And then our final answer is a compass that is pointing towards where B2 is pointing, so downwards. So this is your north. Uh, so your compass just points towards the direction of B total, which is down. So this is our final answer for part A. And now for part B, they are saying that what they're asking is, so for scenarios one and three, would the wires attract or repel each other? Justify. Okay. So let's just go ahead and maybe just grab a blank piece of paper. Okay, so for part two, what I did is I just rewrote my scenarios that are interesting to me, uh, which is the ones that they asked me about. And basically, I didn't draw the compass because what we care about is whether these two wires are going to attract or repel each other. So for scenario one, uh, and for both of them really, what I want to find is the force on wire two due to wire one. So basically, I'm going to use this as a reference and then see what these wire fields do to this one. If this wire is feeling a force to the right, then they are repelling each other. If this wire feels a force to the left, then they are attracting each other. Now, I just want to clarify that you could do it the reverse way. So you could do force on one due to two, and then you would just have to do the opposite of what I do, but your answer should be the same. Uh, but I'm just gonna pick this way of doing this problem, and then that's just gonna be it. So for force on two due to one, we need our three things that we always check out, right? So we need our velocity, our magnetic field, and then whether the charge is positive or negative. Now, I just want to comment on this, that for the purposes of 7b and 7c, we use the, you know, the convention that our charges that are moving are positive. We did that on 7b for circuits, and for 7c, we're going to do exactly the same. I'm not going to go in depth as to why is the case, because you should have learned that on 7b, and you should have also been mentioned on lecture and DL, but this is just a convention that we use and really that the entire world uses. And that convention is that these are positive charges moving. Now, these charges, the charges uh, on two that are feeling the force are going out of the page. So these charges are going out of the page. And then for B, so this would be B1, right? For B, we have to use our right-hand rule over here because this is the force that these guys are feeling due to this wire over here. So if we use our right-hand rule, we're gonna see that we get a downwards magnetic field. So if we do our right-hand rule, we're gonna see that the result of this, feel free to use your fingers, is going uh, right. And then because it's a positive charge, we don't have to flip our answer and our final answer is right. So this force, this wire is feeling a force going to the right, which means that my final answer is that both wires repel each other, final answer. So now we just have to do exactly the same for scenario number three. On scenario number three, our velocity is going, again, our positive charges are going out of the page. But if we use our right hand rule, then you'll see that if this is going out of the page, 
then my magnetic field at this point due to wire one would be up. So if you do your right hand rule over here, then you're gonna get left. And this is positive charges, again, not going into depth. This is just the convention that it is uh, positive charges. So I don't have to flip my answer, so my final answer is left. So this guy wants to move this way, and because he wants to move this way, then that means that the wires attract each other. Final answer. Now, the way that I did it is I did force on two due to wire one. Feel free to do it the other way around and you'll see that, you know, you should be getting the exact same answer, uh, but this would look a little different because you would be doing the magnetic, you would be using your right hand rule here and looking at the charges moving here, but you should be able to get the exact same answer. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed these videos. If you would like some videos, you know, more geared towards the final exam, definitely let me know and I'll see, uh, and I'll see what I can do about it. I'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.